If your spidey sense is tingling, then it may be because Insomniac Spider-Man 2 video game is fast approaching its October 20th release date. And because it's almost out, I got to go play a hands-on demo to get a taste of what to come. And not to brag, but it was totally amazing and spectacular and all the different Spider-Man adjectives. Now, being the big superhero fan that I am, I could not help but geek out about the story they're telling with this symbiote, which we all know starts with Black Suit Spider-Man and ends with Venom. The small chunk of story I played through was overflowing with all manner of references to iconic Spidey comics, as well as movies and TV shows. So here is a rundown of all the cool Venomized stuff that I saw. Before we begin, a note on spoilers. The demo I played was essentially the same part of Spider-Man 2 shown in the first gameplay preview where Peter and Miles chased the lizard while battling Kraven's goons. The demo began a bit before that action scene and ended not too long after. The demo did not contain any huge plot twists, but still I'm going to be describing everything I saw, so if you want to go into the game with a clean slate, then best to skip this and get on out of here. Okay, so our demo started off with a cinematic where Peter Parker, already in the black symbiote suit, is confronted by Kraven the Hunter inside a cathedral. This church setting is a signature element of the Venom saga, as it is where Peter loses the symbiote and the black goo chooses an at-rock-bottom Eddie Brock as its new host. However, this time around, there is no Eddie Brock. More on that in a moment. But the scene does include the crucial revelation that the symbiote is weak to loud sounds as seen when the large church bell is accidentally struck during the confrontation and the symbiote convulses in pain and then Peter too, because they are one. Peter is able to steal an important vial of liquid from Craven and escape, but it comes at the cost of exposing a major weakness to his new dangerous enemy. After Peter escapes, Craven monologues to himself a bit, ending on the proclamation that tracking down Spider-Man will be his final hunt. The great hunt begins. Any Marvel comic reader will recognize this as a not-so-subtle reference to the classic storyline Craven's Last Hunt, which clearly inspired the story of Spider-Man 2. In that comic, Craven pledges to hunt down and kill Spider-Man and seemingly succeeds before Spidey digs himself out of his grave and returns to defeat Craven. Notably, Spider-Man wears a black suit in that story, but it's just a cloth version, not the symbiote. In the game, Spidey is bonded with the symbiote, so Kraven faces an even bigger challenge than in the original story. Kraven wants a hunt? I'll give him one he'll never forget! The next part of the story sees Peter meet up with Harry Osborn, who was missing in the first game, only for the ending stinger to show him suspended in black goo inside Norman Osborn's secret Oscorp lab. I love you, son. For the demo, we did not get to play the beginning of the story, so it was a bit of a shock to see Harry already back on his feet, and he already knows that Peter is Spider-Man. The two are working together, seemingly, to find a cure for whatever terminal disease Harry is suffering from. They use a particle accelerator to activate the liquid in the vial that Peter stole from Kraven. And, as you would expect, just as it looks like things are going well, everything suddenly goes horribly wrong, and Kraven's goons attack the lab. I didn't know there were bears in these woods. <laughs> At the climax of the battle, Peter is strung up by Craven's goons and he can't move. And then the goons close in on Harry and are about to attack him. But then Peter is super desperate to save his friend and he unleashes his rage and unlocks a monstrous new ability for the symbiote where it doesn't tentacles pop out and attack enemies in all directions. It's super gross, but really cool. As those familiar with how this story goes already know, the symbiote corrupts Peter by making him incredibly angry, ruthless, and violent. And this is the first instance of that inevitable turn to the dark side. He did it for a good reason, but still, it was really scary. And Harry is super grateful for being saved, but is clearly unnerved by what he just witnessed his best friend do. Let's go, man, before he gets too far. No. He's mine. You sure? He's got big teeth. So do I. Yes, Peter has the symbiote now, but the going theory is that Harry Osborn eventually becomes Venom. Insomniac has already said that Venom's host is not Eddie Brock like in the comics, and Harry is the most obvious next candidate. It seems as though the symbiote is an experimental cure for Harry's disease, but it somehow becomes sentient and winds up bonded to Peter. 
The symbiote starting out as an experimental medical treatment is pulled from the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book version of the Venom story. There's also the fact that the story trailer for Spider-Man 2 starts with Harry saying, we will heal the world. We're gonna heal the world. And then it ends with Venom saying the same thing. We're going to heal the world. So could it be any more obvious that the two are one and the same? The idea of Harry being Venom instead of Eddie Brock isn't a new one. In the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series, Harry became Venom as well. So it looks like Insomniac took inspiration from that show to tell their Venom story. How cool was that? At one point in the demo, we investigated a lab and Peter comes across a computer showing an analysis of a strange mineral that Oscorp had run through a particle accelerator. A button press prompts a machine to present the mineral and it's a jagged black rock with glowing red cracks. The story trailer did show a meteor strike, so for putting one and two together, it seems as though the Venom symbiote came from the meteor after it was put through the particle accelerator. The origin of the symbiote has changed several times over the years. It originally came from a lab on a distant planet during the Secret Wars crossover event, but pretty much all versions since then simplify things by saying it came from space, either from astronauts discovering it on a mission to space or from a meteor crashing to Earth. It looks like Spider-Man 2 isn't trying to reinvent the wheel with where the symbiote came from. At least that's what it looks like from just playing the demo. <laughs> Now, this was my favorite part of playing the demo. The infamous Spider-Man 3 movie by director Sam Raimi featured the symbiote story on the big screen for the first time, and we saw Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker don a black version of his Spidey suit. That suit is an unlockable skin in the game. Many fans, myself included, wanted to wear it in the first game, but it's clear that Insomniac was saving all the Venom-related goodies for the sequel. And now, players can finally suit up in those signature black duds. Aqua Street Dancing, not included. So after the lizard escapes, Peter goes down into the sewers to find him, and he really, really needs to find him. It's very urgent because apparently Dr. Kurt Connors is the only one who can help cure Harry's condition. So it's vitally important that he's found and transformed back into a human. To complicate matters, the lizard is shedding his skin, which causes him to grow in size, and become even more monstrous, just like in the Spider-Man Shed comic. When Peter eventually catches up to him, we see he's become a massive creature with dozens of spikes going down his back. And you know what that means? It's time for a boss fight. As you're fighting the lizard, there's an excellent bit of storytelling that goes on during the boss fight. Even though the lizard is a giant, gnarly monster who could eat a normal man in one gulp, it's hard not to feel bad for him as Peter absolutely wails on him with thunderous symbiote punches. The lizard didn't want to become the lizard. He just wants to turn back into a human and go home to his wife and kid. But as the fight goes on, Peter doesn't seem to care about that as much as he does unleashing his newfound power in the form of brutal symbiote attacks. It really drives home the fact that Connors may be the giant lizard, but Peter has become the true monster, complete with his very own gravelly Christian Bale Batman voice. Where is he? And that is where our demo ended. But even after playing just a couple hours, it was cool to see how Spider-Man 2 is pulling from so many different Venom stories in the Spider-Man franchise's past, but remixing them into something fresh and new. There are plenty more signature Venom elements that could still make their way into the story, from the symbiote's weakness to fire and Venom eating people, to familiar characters such as Carnage and Null. But we'll have to wait until Spider-Man 2 comes out to see exactly what happens. Alrighty, well that is all. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out our official Spider-Man 2 preview by Destin Legary, who gives a great impression of what it's like to play it without giving away too much like I just did. And for more on everything Spider-Man and all the things you love, keep it locked on IGN. Is this how you want your family to remember you? You can still be with them!